Down here, tweak. Oh, mm. <laughs> from Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poo Harding. And tonight, we have a very special guest. This basketball head was first team all city. That's right, first team all city out of William E. Grady. You know I had to say it twice because Grady is our neighbors right across the street from Lincoln. You know how we do, family. He destroyed the competition with a smooth assassin style of play. He was 1998-1999 New York Post Player of the Year. After high school, he attended Hofstra University, where he became a legend. He was honorable mention All-America in 2001. After graduating, or after guiding Hofstra to the NCAA tournament and winning the American East Player of the Year Award. This basketball head helped Hofstra reach the NCAAs twice and the NIT once during his tenure. He ranks ninth all-time on Hofstra's all-time scoring list with 1,677 points and third in three-point field goals with 192. This basketball head also was the recipient of the 2001 Haggerty Award as the top player in the metropolitan area. Yes, he was one of six players who has been named most valuable player of the holiday festival at Madison Square Garden two times. That's right. In addition, he was named to the ECAC Holiday Festival All-Decade Team. Let me run off some names for you. Allen Iverson, Ray Allen, Andre Patterson, Felipe Lopez, and Ron Artest. It's a great list to be a part of. Following graduation, he played professionally in the NBA with the Chicago Bulls and the Indiana Pacers. And then he embarked on an eight-year European tour, professional tour, that is. Italy, Serbia, France, Poland, Germany, you name it, he touched down. He also played in Argentina and the D-League. From June 2012-2014, served as head coach of the professional club in Germany. He also spent time coaching in G-League, the Greenboro Swarm, and now he's back in the NBA as assistant coach of the Charlotte Hornets. So without further ado, help me welcome to the show, William E. Grady, Hofstra University legend, former NBA player, and now the assistant coach to the Charlotte Hornets, Coach Norm Richardson. You all ready? 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 Yes. 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 You are you are self into the world of chaos. What's up, what's up, what's up, people? What's going on, basketball heads? What's happening? I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding, and welcome to the show. Got my guy, Norm Richardson, coming up here. We're going to kick it, man. If you guys missed last night's episode 
with Gary Irvin. Please go check the show out. It's a top interview, man. Like, I'm not gonna say it's the best, but very interesting. I, I, I like the the back and forth that we had. Um, he knows uh, that he was great, and sometimes people gotta be reminded, you know. And and last night he came on the show knowing. Yo, I did a lot, and I need to be recognized. So he's doing a documentary. Please look forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. I definitely want to see those games we destroyed in high school, having 50 points. You know, he said he had 50 points in the eighth grade, right? Crazy. Uncle never saw him play, come to the game, drops 50. How about this? He's being recruited by Mississippi. Oh, what's up? All right, we were here, right? And the coach, he's in the park waiting for him 6 o'clock in the morning. Listen, that's dedication. When you want a player and you want to show your interest, you got to do more than just, you know, write letters, say we want you. You got to be following me. Make sure you follow me, Norm. You got to follow me back. It's the only way this is going to work. Yeah, you got to follow me back. Once you follow me back, yeah, and it should be rocking now. Nope. Follow me back, Norm, so I'll get you in the room. Say you're following me. I'm following you. He's following me now. Let's see. Let's try to do this again. All right, there we go. Here we go. Man, I, I'm glad I, I'm able to do this. What's okay. happening, man? What's going on, King? What's going on, brother? What's I, going on with you, man? I'm awesome, man. I'm awesome. Good, good, good. That's what's up, man. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while, man. A long time, man. Long time, man. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I know uh, Six is going to be proud of this when he see this, man. And yeah, I, I'm glad. No Yo, Slice, good looking out. I appreciate you, my brother. Me and Slice was just chopping it up. And right after okay. back, he just like, yo, you had Norman the show? You got to get Norman the show. As soon as okay. I knew it, he was calling you. So I didn't know you yeah. was on the phone. I thought he was calling Juju because I spoke yeah. to Juju the other day. Okay. And he's like, yo, I'm down to be on the show. I was like, cool. So when he called you, I was like, okay, nah. Let me get his number. We got we got to yeah. do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, no doubt, no doubt, man, no doubt, no, no doubt, doubt, my doubt brother. About it. So Definitely. let me tell you, man. I I I've been watching you for a long time. My brother's been bragging about you, and then later on, I get to work with Marco, and he gets to tell me all the insides of your college yeah. years that we didn't get to see. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, Marco. Yeah, Marco's. Uh, that's that's my brother. We were we were. We go back since you know since our high school days. Right. We we our relationship relationship just grew throughout throughout our college years, and uh, he's one of my best friends, man. It's Yo, that's brother. that's that's my brother for life. So you know, yeah, we we absolutely. in good company, man. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he he told me he knew you. I was like, oh, I knew him for years. I know him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I want to jump right into this, man. Who introduced you to the game? Uh, my my older brother, uh, Derek Flight Brown. He, uh, you know, he was, you know, the first person that, uh, you know, I obviously looked up to him, followed him, followed him all around New York City during our, our younger years. And I wanted to emulate him. I wanted to be like him. So, uh, you know, whatever he did, you know, I just tried to do, you know, the things that he that he was doing. And and uh, so he was the first person to introduce me to the game and kind of influence me to, you know, start going down that path. Listen, I, I, sad, sad to say, people, on a lot of these interviews, I'll be having a cheat sheet. Sorry. Uh, you know, I, that, I, even though I asked all my guests that question, I kind of knew that. And I just want to uh, touch on your brother for a second, man. Yeah. I watched him as well come up. And yeah. to see him progress and become the man that he is today, he was always that king. 
He was always righteous. He was always 10 toes down. He never behaved like he was better than everybody else when he was better than everybody else. Yeah, yeah. No doubt about it. No doubt so about it. Yeah. tonight, along with celebrating you, we're going to celebrate your brother because he's a king, man. And listen, if you hear this, my brother, I love you. We all love you. The New York City basketball culture, man, we owe you a lot, man. And what you did for yeah. your brother is awesome. So, King, when you hear this, man, respect you, brother. Facts. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Big yeah. salute. Thank you. I appreciate it, too. Nah, nah, nah. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. So, what what was it like coming up in Coney Island, man? It was good. You know, obviously it was a... And, and my father building, basketball. by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your dad's building. Yeah. Right, right. Well, I had a lot of respect for, for sure. It was good. You know, it was, it was a, you know, it was a big basketball community. Uh, you know, we had a lot of, you know, a lot of guys that went on to have success playing basketball, whether that was in college or professionally. So, you know, we had a lot of influence from, you know, from that perspective. Just, you know, you know, starting with the Marberries, obviously they were a huge basketball family in our neighborhood. And um, so we got a chance to compete with some of the best players around around New York City. And that to me was, you know, what was spearheaded, you know, that community, you know, uh, basketball wise, just to take a spike, you know, just having so many guys when we were younger to look up to and just follow in their footsteps. And, you know, we were lucky enough to have, you know, some some really, really good basketball players, but even more importantly, some really good people. So, you know, to look into their, you know, to follow after. So that was, uh, that was pretty much what we, you know, you know, it's pretty much, uh, what we did. And, you know, it was fantastic. I'm, I'm very fortunate to come from that, you know, that community. Yeah, man. And listen, Rick Combs, Rick Combs, the OG from Coney Island, right? That was supposed yeah. to go to Lincoln, but his parents moved to Uniondale and he wound up going and starting Uniondale High School. Yeah. He just put up something. Now this is crazy. Now this is okay. This is something that I didn't know. Now, Puma, your Puma is Puma your older brother. Is he the oldest? He's my oldest brother. Yeah. Now listen to this, fam. Yeah. So this is where the disconnect come from. I, I, you know, of course, we're around the same. Your brother Puma, six, all of yeah. us around the same yes. age. Yes. So, man, this is crazy, man. Because I knew the ball players. I knew you guys, you know what I'm saying? Yes. You and Flight yes. brothers. Yes. But I didn't yes. know. I didn't, this is the yeah. first for me. Yeah. Fam. Yeah, that was my that's my brother. Uh, th we all we family. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. This is absolutely can't take it no further than that. I, I seen your absolutely. brother come up. Another cool dude. Always show me yes. love. Now I'm not from Corny Island. I'm one of the first guys from Cross Town to come on, on that side. And because right. my family, who my family is. I was introduced to everybody early and everybody showed me love. So I never had any problems with Coney Allen. Right. And they accepted me as one of their own. But even okay. then, the dudes who didn't play ball, the dudes who were just the dudes in the neighborhood, made sure when my brothers wasn't around and my people, that I was good. Yes, absolutely. And absolutely. your brother was one of them. So salute Puma, man, for sure. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. For yes, sure. sir. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Pooh. Oh, man, this is this is awesome, man. So yeah, I want to go back to the beginning, right? The yeah. the first team, because I always ask guys this about that first moment you stepped on the court. What was it like with the referees and everything in your first game? Do you remember? Well, the, yeah, I remember. I mean, the first game I, I I played, I think was on was on our basketball court right on our street, Twenty Third Street. Uh, I think my brother was running like these little tournaments, you know, for the younger. My brother Derek was running these tournaments for the younger kids on that, you know, in that on that court, and I got a chance to, you know, step on the court with some guys who who've been playing, you know, before I started. And um, I don't know if we had official referees or not. I think he was just refereeing the game, but at least it was under a whistle. Yeah. I don't think I, yeah, you know, I didn't I didn't know the rules, and you know, anything like that. So I think that was my introduction to like. You know, basketball one on one. <laughs> I was, I was terrible. I was awful. Listen, and uh, yo, it's so, know, it's crazy because yeah. Trevor Diggs is on here. His father did the yeah. same thing. His father ran yeah. the tournament and was yeah. the referee as well. Salute, Mr. Diggs. This is crazy. Oh, Trevor Diggs. Yeah, that's another one of my one of my close friends. Me and Trevor went to prep school together, and uh, 
played played on the same team for a year. I love Trevor, man. He's such a great dude. One of the better dudes that uh that come out from, that come from Brooklyn. Man. I love that guy. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, man. And, and, and look, see, back to your brother again, being a solid yeah. dude, coming back and doing yes. for the community. Yes, absolutely. Listen, no man, doubt. Stand up, no man. Doubt about Always it. stand up. No doubt. So another real question, but I asked all my yeah. guests this: Who was yeah. the best player in the neighborhood when you was coming up? The best player? Well, I'm biased. Uh, it's, it's actually a guy who I kind I kind of looked up to, other than my brother, and that's that was Mo Brown. You know, Mo Fresh Brown to me was like, you know, he was like the best player coming from our neighborhood. Uh, he was the I always tell people the story. He was the first person that I knew personally that had someone come visit him that I only saw on TV. Wow. You know, Luke kind of Luke kind of came to you know came to our building to recruit him, and I remember seeing him on TV, and I I think that was I thought that was just the coolest thing ever. And uh, when he walked through the building, and um, and I and I got a chance to see him and. And, you know, almost like I didn't touch him, but I was close enough to touch him. You know, it just made me you know, just want to pursue basketball and made me, uh, you know, follow Mo Brown that much more. And Mo, I always tell Mo this. He's like one of my idols. That's my childhood idol, you know. He probably was the best guy from our neighborhood, you know, wow. outside of my brother. Let me tell you, man, he talked about that story. I'll be putting it up on YouTube soon. Okay, okay, cool. About him looking forward to playing for Luke Conaseca and, and not, okay. and then when he got there, him leaving. Yeah. Yeah. You, yes. you get what I'm saying? But yeah. uh, he, he was such a dynamic player, man. He was such a dynamic player. And his heart, his heart was so much bigger than he was the best player, right? That he was. Absolutely. Absolutely. He was fearless. He was yes. fearless. He was skilled. Uh, he was, he was definitely uh Phenomenal player, you know. We all know what he did in high school, and he was a good player once he got to the college level as well. That's right. You know, I know he had his bumps and bruises early, but once he got, you know, the feel for like, you know, for a new coaching staff and you know, for, for college basketball in itself, he, he came into his own. Yeah, man. As you know? family do, family goes. So I guess yes. when you was coming up, your brother was killing that Grady. There was no way we was going to get you at Lincoln. And then Mo no. Brown went to Grady. And then, right? Let's let's let, let, let's back up for a second because you guys were the game changers. Right? Because when in my era, you know, great rivalries, but we always came out on the winning end. Right? Yeah. And yeah. then the ties changed. The ties changed. And that was you guys that made that tie. Yeah. You guys switched that whole thing. Yeah. I, I guess it started with your brother, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I think now. Nah, I, I don't know. I don't know if it started. I think it started before my brother got there. It started with like with, with mowing him. Yes, because like, that they was that yes. championship. Got yeah, you. Got on. you. Nine, that ninety and, uh, team. Yes. Yeah, ninety. Yeah, nineteen ninety team won a state championship, and you know Grady was pretty much on the map. You know, moving forward. I knew I was going to Grady. I knew I, I, I didn't think about going to no other school. My two childhood idols, my brother and Mo Brown, was going to Grady. The footsteps. Uh, so, yeah, it was no chance for me going to Lincoln. I knew Lincoln was a – I know all the Marbury's went through that school, and they were like, you know, they kind of pretty much, you know, put their stamp on that program already and had it, you know, had it rocking and rolling. I wanted to play against, against you know, one of the Marbury's at the time. It was Stephon Marbury. So, you know, going to Grady, I knew it, it would be a good chance to compete against him and and hopefully get a chance for colleges to see me and give me a chance to, you know, you know, go to college and play at that level. And, and figure, as great as Stephon was, I think he only he won it once. I think he only won the championship one time, yeah, in 95, for senior year. Yep, that's correct. Yeah, they beat us all the time, but he won one. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. How, how was those battles? Because unless, unless we're, we're going to talk about that a little later on, but yeah. those battles, I don't think no school had a rivalry like that because we were so close. And the fact that both yeah. of us were good. Yeah. Um, I mean, the battles, were, they were they were great, right? They were, they were like, 
you know, one of the best rivalries in a public school, uh, public school in PSAL in, in New York City during that time. Um, you know, they, 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 you know, they had Steph, like I said, they had Stephon Marbury, who was probably the best player in his class, you know, throughout his high school careers. Uh, Jamel Thomas, who was another phenomenal player at Lincoln. Uh, Gerard, Butchie Hawkins, they had a lot of talented guys there. Butchie. Yeah, yeah, who, who a lot of people don't know about, but he was like one of the, one of the best players in New York City. You could nominate uh, him. You could nominate him because Gary, Gary, uh, yeah, Irvin talked yeah, about him last Irvin, night. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Butchie was, yeah, he was great. He and was a few really others, good. Bernard Mitchell, them guys, they come up here oh, and talk. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, they know how good he was. He was a really good player. So they would, they had, they had a good team, and you know, they, they were, they were talented. We were talented. We had, we had some talented guys. So you know, the, the rival was. You know, it started early on, but we just we just continue to you know, you know, to build on it. And uh, you know, it was it was two Coney Island schools with big Coney Island crowds, um, and everybody was you know there to see us play. And it was it was like you know one of the best rivalries I've been a part of. Um, and you know, I will never forget those days. What what year? What year did you start to come into your own? Like, did you do the whole <laughs> JV? You know, then go to varsity, or you jump right in on varsity. You know, I was fortunate to play varsity all four years. Wow. You know, I think, you know, I think I got a nudge because my brother went there. That kind of helped me. I don't know if I was ready to play varsity my first year, but thanks to my brother, that's honest. Um, Jack Ringle, that's honest, yeah. yo. Yeah, you know, Jack Ringle was the head coach, and he knew me since I was in seventh grade. So, you know, he he saw some potential in me that I didn't even know I had at the time, and he gave me that chance to be on varsity. My freshman year, uh, but you know, I think after my freshman year that summer, I got a chance to work a lot with my brother, um, Tippy. I was working with Tippy and Ziggy with Brooklyn USA, and they helped me get better that summer. And you know, going to my sophomore year, I was ready to play varsity, you know, full time, and I was a starter from from there on. Wow. All right, let me see what uh, Coach Tiny Morton said. Grady had Larry Brown to come see them play against. Uh, Who's this? Augusta against us. And that was wow in the late 80s. I just went to Villanova from Grady and had a pro NBA. Mm, okay. Had an NBA pro before. Mm, oh, wow. I'm, I'm sorry. What did Tiny say? I'm, he I'm said, he way. said Grady had an NBA pro player before Lincoln. Yeah, they did. It Rolando Black Blackman was the yes. first. Yes. Yes. The first pro. Yeah, yes. He, he goes way back. I, I had him on the show as well. Yeah, okay, yeah. And yeah, so. he was second team all city and still made it to the big eight. He was yeah, second I mean, team yeah. all city. Right, right. And still played at Kansas State and still killed there. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, not I mean, happening. Who's second team all city going to Kansas State? I don't know how it is today, but I guess in the 80s and 90s, New York City was kind of packed with players. So, you know, I'm not familiar with the high school circuit right now in the city, uh, but I know during that time, guys were, guys were, you know, guys were you know, making second team and still going to high major schools. So that doesn't surprise me too much. You know what I mean? I, I don't know how it is now. now. Now it might be a little different. You can yeah. probably school me on that a little more. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a lot different now. The girls, okay. the girls are going to better schools than the guys. Okay, okay, yeah, I got yeah. you, I got you for sure. Uh, yeah. As a overall, right? Okay. What yep, what yep. what year did you start to come into your own? Like, what year was it that it was like, yo, I'm here now, Rob, and everybody else knows? I don't think I came into my own <clears throat> until I got to college. You know, Ooh. I think in high school, I was kind of like under the radar. Um, you know, I, I I was I would you know I. Played on a really good AU team, um, you know, with, with some really good players, Riverside Church. Uh, but I always was kind of under the radar during those high school years. I think once I got to college and got a chance to start improving under Jay Wright uh, and that coaching staff, they, you know, they had Speedy Claxton at the time, who was an unbelievable player. Um, you know, I think I think that's when I started to come into my own and started you know, gain respect from you know, the basketball community itself. Um, but before that, you know, I, obviously I didn't I didn't get recruited highly. I went to Hofstra. Hofstra wasn't a very well-known school um, in, nine, in the 90s. Um, but so, you were still you know, all-city? You were still all-city? 
I did. I made. I made my senior. Year. I think I made all city my senior year. But you know, it was it was it was a quiet all city. It wasn't like you know, it wasn't one that you know that you know that had people you know speaking about me you know too highly. You know, so hey, and it was fine. I'm not you know that, that didn't really bother me that much. I knew knew I had a lot to work on. I, again, I never thought I'd be able to play professional basketball coming up. I just thought I was going to play, hopefully, go to college and you know work after that. So you know. You know, thinking about that, you know, uh, alone, you know, I didn't expect much in high school from a basketball standpoint. But I came into my own in college. After my sophomore year, I made all, all conference, and um, and I started to really gain a lot of confidence and believe in myself. And I gotta thank my my college coaching staff for that. Wow, yeah, that, that's dope, man. Um, Tiny said I was two inches from going to Grady. Yes, we all know, <laughs> but you are there full time now. What do you think about that? Oh man, you know what? <laughs> hey, since you, know you don't want to come on, since you don't want to come on and talk about it, let's talk about yeah. it, Norm. Listen, I tell you what I think about Tiny. It's funny, man. Tiny, Tiny, I told I, I told Tiny this before. I don't know if I told him this personally, but I know I I, I wrote this under a lot of his posts, man. Tiny was a big ins- inspiration to me as well. Just because of, and I don't believe he was going to come to Grady. I still don't believe that. But that's another story. We'll talk about that another time, Tiny. But uh, I think, uh, you know, he was such an inspiration, you know, from a coaching standpoint. You know, seeing him have so much success, uh, you know, in the PSAL coaching Lincoln for all those years, developing these these pros. Um, I mean, having guys, you know, the first six, you know, under six foot player to go straight from high school to the NBA. You know, he just inspired, you know, inspired me. You know, you know, I wanted to be a coach watching him coach and, you know, and now having the opportunity to coach and, um, you know, and get my feet wet in that profession. And, you know, it's almost like I'm starting over now in coaching, you know, just learning and growing and trying to learn from, you know, all the people I've been working on, working for and working with. And, you know, and seeing Tiny throughout those years was a big, you know, inspiration. And um, and I'm not sure if I told him this personally, but, you know, I'm, I'm saying this on the show because it's just the truth. You know, I think he's the, he's probably, you know, if he's not, if he's not the best, he's, he's definitely one of the best high school basketball coaches to ever come out of New York City. And I got a number of respect for him. Well, you already know how we, how we do at Lincoln, man. I, I could say, yeah. you know, my God, definitely one of the best. If he's not one of the best, he's damn sure one of the best dress. You see him on the damn sidelines, <laughs> Gucci shirt, yeah. Gucci shoes. Gucci belt. He's coaching a city championship game, and he's looking like he's going on a fucking runway. Oh, Tiny, man. what's going goodness. on? Goodness, it's crazy, I, I man. Hey, man. <laughs> I, and let's not forget, he was a hell of a player too. So uh, I listen, I, I I said it on the show a thousand times. Yeah, yeah. All of these things happen. Crazy yeah. how all of these things happen. And we didn't have like a real star player. We had a real team. Yeah. Tiny okay. cut up some of the best players, some of the best point guards that was in the city. They couldn't deal with Tiny. And that's why yeah, they all okay. respect him. You know, you don't, you, you rarely hear dudes go, yo, son, he a good coach, but he was trash. They yeah, know. Right, right. No doubt. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. That's he right. Can, he definitely can hoop. Yes, yes. So, since you said, we're going to save that question to later on. Yeah. How important was it for you? to be noticed, especially in Coney Island, when you had your brother, right? Yeah. You the little brother, right? You already got your brother yeah. solidified outside. Yeah. And now you got your brother all over the world playing basketball. How important was it yeah. for you to live up to those same things as far as on the basketball side as you were seeing your brother fight with doing? Well, it, it was... You know, I, I would say it was, you know, it was important for me to get respect or gain respect from the Coney Island basketball community because I knew if I can gain their respect, you know, I can gain anyone's respect. You know, that was a very, again, it goes back to, to the beginning when I said, you know, it was, it's a very, it's a very um, rich basketball community, right, with a lot of Division One and professional basketball players come from that community. So, you know, to gain their respect, you know, it meant a lot to me. You know, and again, it took time for me to get there. My brother had a, a really good reputation in our neighborhood. 
um, you know, as a person, but as well as a basketball player. Um, so, you know, he had, you know, he kind of, you know, put a lot of uh, pressure on me to try to follow those footsteps and hopefully, you know, you know, just, you know, try my best to, to, to live up to, to those expectations that he put on me and that I was putting on myself. Um, so, you know, to, to get the respect from guys in my community, um, it meant the world to me. Um, and that's why, you know, that's why I always, you know, I always, you know, communicate with guys from there. I stay in touch with them. I, anytime I'm in New York, I spend time with them. I think these are all, you know, things that, you know, that started when I was a high school, when I was a high school player. And um, I'm very fortunate, you know, to have, you know, good people from that community that supported me all throughout those years and, and, and helped me gain confidence, you know, as a basketball player and, and mold me, you know, help me mold, mold me as a player and a person. Listen, Slice was bragging about you so much. And right. it, and it was more or less of the kind of person you are. Right. 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 Said, right. Gee, right. I could call him anytime. He's going to pick up the phone. We all, and when you came on the phone, it was just like, I felt the same energy that he was talking about you. You know, yeah. so those relationships and those bonds can be, never be broken, man. So that's very important. Absolutely, absolutely. Slice is uh, it's my brother. You know, I got number love with Slice, and he knows that. Facts. So, besides Hofstra, was anybody else recruiting you? Yeah, I think I had uh, I had a uh, Cleveland State recruited me. Uh, State. East Carolina. Yeah, East Carolina, and I think West Virginia were were three schools that recruited me pretty hard. DePaul came on later on, but uh, Hofstra was a school that uh, you know, it's funny because. Initially, they didn't. They didn't. They wasn't recruiting me early on, and I think Jay Wright had a guy there, this guy uh, Joe Brown, who was a really good player from Philadelphia, played the same position, and he was he was high on Joe Brown. So I, I think he, you know, he thought if he brought me there, I wouldn't play much. Um, so they didn't recruit me. I actually had to go to Jack Ringo and ask Jack to give you know Jay Wright a call and see what they offered me a scholarship. Uh, Roberto Gittins, who I played with in high school, signed with Hofstra. And I wanted to play with you know, I just want right. I wanted to go, you know, to a school with someone that I was familiar with. Because I was afraid going to college. I didn't know what to expect in college. So when um when he called uh Jay Wright for me, um, you know, Coach Wright came to watch me play and then, you know, eventually he decided to offer me a scholarship and um and that was the reason why I went to Hofstra. But I didn't get recruited by many other schools and Hofstra was probably the, you know, the you know, the best school that I could pick at that time, you know, obviously it worked out for me. So, yeah. Yo, man, you guys had an a awesome group of guys. Speedy yourself, yeah. Mark, uh, Roberto, you know, solid dudes. When you talk about solid dudes. And and it's so important to have good teammates because that's how you yeah. win. Yeah. Right? You have to Absolutely. be You have to be tight as a unit. Yeah. And I tell kids to this day, you know, if you don't get along with your brothers and your team, you guys are not going to win. Yeah. It yeah, doesn't happen yeah. like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it's also important. To, I mean, we got it. We got to shout out our coaching staff there. I think they were, they were like, you know, they were huge in, you know, putting us together and making us feel like a family. I mean, they did a great job of, of, you know, getting us to buy in to what they were selling. Um, they were always very authentic. Um, with their message, um, they just they taught us so much on and off the floor. You know, when you look back, you know, you see the valuable lessons that, that we were able to take away from, you know, our experience at Austria. Yeah. Um, so the coaching staff, that entire coaching staff, I was led by Coach Wright, was uh was phenomenal. You know, Tom Pacora, Brett Gunning, Eugene Burroughs, David Duke. You know, that whole group was was great. They had great chemistry, and you know, and Coach Wright did a good job leading them and helping them. You know help us buy in to what they were what they were teaching and didn't he just get it to the hall of fame yeah he was just inducted to the hall of fame yep yeah he was inducted to the hall of fame yesterday so you know big congrats to coach right no doubt yeah tiny you kind of late we, we talked about the the whole history of building too trust me <laughs> we, we, we ain't unveiled too much but you know him yeah. and i talked in cold we definitely know for sure Yes. I wish I could see I wish I could see tiny comments. 
I can see his comments, man. I, uh, they're pinned. They're pinned on the bottom. Okay, they're pinned. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll get back to him. Yeah, yeah. And, and for, for those people coming in, I can't wave back because if I reach over the camera, it's going to get confused with my YouTube, which I'm pointing all over the camera now. So I'm streaming on both YouTube, my audio, and then I'll put it okay. all together later. So. Okay. Yeah. Explain it to the world how I do my man. So good. <laughs> all right. So, and, and you just asked my next question because I said, uh, how much of a role did your teammates and coach play in your individual success? And you just explained how, right? Yeah. Bringing you yeah. guys together, yeah. motivating each other. Yeah. Yeah. That was the coaches. The coaches did a good job of that. I mean, the teammates, I mean, my teammates, you know, Coach Wright and, and that staff did a good job recruiting good people, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, you know, you want to have, you want to work with good people. You want to, um, you know, build a bond with good people. And that's what they did at Hofstra. I mean, he's doing the same thing at Villanova. Um, and that's what we did at Hofstra. We had, a, a, I mean, a really, really solid group of people, just good human beings that, you know, that that I call, you know, friends to this very day. Like, we're very close. You know, whenever we see each other, you know, we embrace and have good lives and stuff like that. And, um, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're all doing well today. So, uh, there's, you know, it's something that I'm proud to speak about. They're proud to call friends and my brothers. And I'm, I'm very fortunate to have the chance to, to, to have met them and played with them and had the chance to spend some time with them for those four years or how many years I spent with guys at Hofstra. When you came into college from Grady, you know, you say you didn't know a lot about college, what, was, what to expect. What transitions yeah. did you have to make to adjust? Going to, into college? Yes. Uh, well, it was, I mean, it was, it was, I think, everything cultural. You know, I came from, you know, I came from Coney Island, which we all know the background. It's an urban community. Um, so co from a cultural standpoint, I had to really, like, adapt, right? I had to learn new friends, learn new cultures. Um, and, you know, that took some time for me. It took some time for me, just to be honest, right? I didn't, I didn't know what to expect um, uh, from a classroom standpoint. You know, going to school in you know New York City public schools. You know, you go your you go from class to class in one building. In college, you're going from you know building to building. Uh, so you know, and you're trying to manage that you know with practice and study hall, and it just was a lot. It was a lot to uh, you know <clears throat> you know to grasp at at the very beginning, but. Again, it goes back to, 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 the, to the coaching staff. The support system that they created for us at that time really helped us um, adjust. And, you know, and we all was able to, you know, do what we need to do to be student athletes, right? You know, to get our degrees and, and to, to be good citizens moving forward. So it was, it was definitely a collective effort, you know, from the coaching staff. Um, the good people that we had around us, and then we obviously had to do the do the work ourselves. So it was it was it was good, but the adjustment was definitely uh, it took some time for me. Wow, that's awesome. So yeah. my my guy uh, Rick Cole said he's still upset his parents moved out to Sea Park in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, I, yeah. no matter how long ago, especially if it pertains to basketball, you know. Yeah. <laughs> our memories are very sharp, man. We want to remember the thing that was important to us. And that guy, he yeah. wanted to go to Lincoln so bad. And we probably have been teammates. Who knows? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And definitely could have used him after Spice became an eligible, man. That's a whole other story. Now, listen. <laughs> now, listen. This is what I told Tiny, right? Uh, yeah. Corny Allen is made up of a lot of fundamentally sound players, yeah. right? Yes. Corny Allen's also the uptown of Brooklyn, whereas you get a name when you're like three years old, you get a nickname early on, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this could be only me now. I say three that I know. I probably tip, okay. So t Spice was the first. For me, maybe somebody before that. The dude who had the boogie with it, right? Yeah. Spice had yeah. that Pearl Washington boogie. Come to find out, I didn't know Spice didn't grow up in Coney Island. He grew up in Bed Stuy. Right. Now comes Tiny. When I'm playing, 
Being a freshman, Josie Walker was the best freshman with the best ninth grade in Coney Island. Josie Walker. You know little Josie? I know Josie, absolutely. Josie Josie was the best ninth grader coming in. He was far better than all of us. Okay. Fundamentally sound. But then that next year, Tiny comes into the school. And Tiny has this. He has this boogie. He has... It was just different. I, I didn't notice that with the other Coney Island players. Yeah. Come to find out, Tiny's from East New York, Brownsville, Queens, by way of Coney Island. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So just uh, yeah. uh uh and you, your brother, Mo Brown, Steph, Juju, go back to Don and Eric Marbury. These dudes are fundamentally sad. But then also yeah. My man Mike, Mike, what's my man name? Oh, Mike Spence. He played a Lincoln with me. Yes. He had that tricky, yes. boogie kind of thing with him as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right? And yeah. <laughs> so when we talk about Corny Allen basketball, the, the basis of it is a lot of great fundamentally and good fundamentally sound players who really don't play too much with the ball. It's not really and one. You guys was joking. You guys out there dead ass serious baller. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, again, like Coney Island is like its own little community in Brooklyn. Yes. Yeah, you know, right? It's like, is that the, you know, is that the tip of South Brooklyn? No one really likes to go there. Right, well, we don't like to. We, we don't mind going there. I just find that a lot of people don't like to leave. Yeah, <laughs> they don't like to come to yeah. other neighborhoods, right? There's, there's not right. too many times. A, a few yeah, will come I mean, out. We're so the thing about it, we're so far from everyone else. Yes, people just didn't like to take that ride. It was just out the way, right? So, you know, so we kind of like you know we kind of got our own thing going. But I think, and I think when you talk about the fundamentals, I think it goes back to like some of the older guys that. Used to take the time out the trainers yes. coming up. Yeah, you know, Mister Lou, uh, brother. You know, he's not as old, but he was doing it from a very young age. Uh, Disco Reed. Yes. Jock, remember Jock? Yes. Right. So you know, we had all these guys that was helping us. You know, you know, train as young kids, um, and work on the fundamentals: ball handling, uh, passing, shooting. You know, just the things that you know that. You know, I guess you want, as you you would say, just the basics of basketball. You know, from a young age, that you know, we we, we got a chance to to learn it and and grow every day, especially during the summer times. You know, in the summer it was uh it was a time that we we spent hours on the basketball court. You know, working out in the morning, then playing you know five on five with our age group, and we watched the older guys play. Um, we had community center across the street from our building that we used to go play. Uh, I, I used to have I, tournaments in there. I loved. I used to love that place. That was my sanctuary. Yeah. yeah, great place to play. Great place to learn, right? And um, you know, we we were going in, learn and play basketball in there. So I think from a young age, we just had so many people helping us, and you know, we was able to observe. Like I remember watching Tiny and him play pickup ball and seeing Tiny was like the first guy that I watched be like a pass first point guard, right? Just getting guys involved, and, you know understand how to play. I didn't know what it meant then, but when I look back, I know what it meant. I know how he was playing. I understood what he was doing. Uh, but again, we had so many guys coming up. And then, you know, for me, like the, you know, the, like the, the, I always call, I call him like the godfather of Coney Island basketball. I mean, some people may agree, some people may not agree, but Stefan Marbury to me is like the godfather of it. Even though he was younger than some of them, older than some, he just was, you know, he was the best player that I've ever seen in high school. And he was so fundamentally sound, you know, that, you know, I look at him as like that blueprint for, for the guys that came up behind him, like myself and others, many others. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was just a lot of people who played a hand in that. And, um, you know, I don't want to jump around too much. No, no, no. That was good. awesome, man. That was awesome. Steph yeah. was the first one, yeah. right? Yeah. To follow the Go blueprint, to, the to follow yeah. the whole blueprint. He, yeah. The absolutely. whole blueprint. And then everybody's like, oh, okay, I need to do the Stephon Marbury workout. 27,000 steps and flights. Yeah. Go to the beach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Stephon was like, Stephon was the first guy, you know, to, to make, I think, all of us believe that we can make it to the NBA from that neighborhood. You know, I don't know if we, if we were 
you know, I know I didn't have the confidence to play at that level until I seen someone that I could touch that I knew personally do it. You know, when I saw him do it, you know, it was such an inspiration. It was, it was, it's, it was just something that that it sparked me, you know, to even want to go harder than I would, already was doing. You know, like, but like I said, you have in in life, you have stages of people that just to inspire you. And I talked about earlier who inspired me, and Steph was one of those guys who inspired me later on. You know, once I got to college and see him get get his name called, you know, in the, on that NBA uh, on that draft night to the NBA and you know he was another guy who was a big a big inspiration you know to me and many others from Coney Island. Well when I go back to Lincoln, you know I could look up to the rafters and see Steph number, see Bashy number, Lance yeah. number. I go to Grady, Tiny said, your number's not retired at Grady. Yeah. I mean you know it's 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 okay. It's, you know sometimes sometimes those things happen, right? Like sometimes Again, I've never been I've never been a popular player. I've never been popular in the basketball community per se, right? I just I always went under the radar, you know, for whatever reason. And to me, that's fine. You know, I have no problem with my number not being retired um, at Grady, uh, Hofstra, or whatever the case may be. I just not you know, Hofstra either. I think, well, I think it's retired, but I think they retired under. It was a player before me who was a legend at Hofstra named Richie Laurel, who got drafted into the NBA. Who his number should have been retired before I got there, but he allowed me to wear his number, so his number was retired after I left the school. Um, but I'm just making examples of, you know, it, to me, it's just not, it's just not something I, I look to gotcha. to receive. I don't look to receive those type of accolades. I mean, it'll be, it'll be flattering to have it happen, but. You know, at the end of the day, as as long as I'm respected by the people that you know that that I know and love, trust and care for, you know, that's all that really matters. You know, I got I'm just moving on out of here. That's 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 what makes you, you so great, man. And just the person that you are, man. Like appreciate you. Nah, nah, this is for real. And it's not an act. This is just who you are. Absolutely. Absolutely, no doubt. No doubt. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. What was it like winning the Haggerty Award? For the best player in the metropolitan area, you know it was it was great. It was it was an honor, all right. It was it was uh, all the big school I mean, that's in this area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a chance to. I mean, that's that's a, that's the time you get recognized, right? You get recognized for, for for all the work you put in. You know, that year, my senior year, we had a really good year at Hofstra. We was able to make the NCAA tournament for a second year in a row. Um, I won conference player of the year, and you know, and, and I. I had a, you know, we had an excellent team, excellent team, excellent staff, and they they put me in a great position during that time. I had no idea I was going to win the Haggerty Award. I was going up against some powerhouse players. So when I when I found that I won it, I, mean, I was I was totally on it and proud, you know, to to win that. Speedy Claxton won the year before, so it made you know it it made me even more you know proud because Hofstra won it two years in a row. And we kind of put our school, help put our school on the mat, you know. And and after that year, we had, I think we had one of the better recruiting classes come in that year, um, you know, with some really good players come in. Kenny Adelike, uh came in that year, who was like a big recruit. Uh, Woody Souffrant came in, who was a good recruit. And I think Wendell Gibson and Chris McCray, who were also like really big recruits, we got, you know, that year. And I think me and Speedy winning that award kind of helped know those guys decided to come to Hofstra so I'm proud of that moment and you and you guys are doing great things right now helping other guys reach their potential yeah thanks right that that how, how that comes full circle but yeah. you know um let me just go back because some of the people that you was mentioned with Right, being the most valuable player of the holiday festival, the Master Square yeah. Garden. Mm -hmm. Right, that ECAC yes. holiday festival. You was named to that all decade team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. and, and yeah. I ran off these names, man, and and I'm gonna say it again, just in case these people weren't here on the intro. Right, Allen Iverson, Ray Allen, Andre Patterson, Felipe Lopez. Ron Artest. We talked about Georgetown, Connecticut, Indiana, St. John's, St. John's. And then you come from Hofstra making 
you know, putting your stamp on everything and winning Haggerty Award. It's not about luck, yeah. fam. This, this, these things don't happen by luck. Yeah, I mean, again, it, it's you know, you know, I think that was that was kind of like you asked earlier, like, what was my, you know, what was my like coming to moment time? I think that was it. You know, my I won the, my first ECAC Holiday Festival Award my my sophomore year. And I think that's when my confidence grew. You know, that's when I started to be, really believe in myself and really believe that I had a chance to, to play basketball after college. You know, up until then, I didn't know. You know I didn't know if I, if, I, if I would ever have that opportunity. But then, you know, having a chance to win that and then winning another year, you know, going in my junior, junior year, you know, it was just, you know, it was definitely uh, a testament to, you know, to the work that they had us doing at Hofstra. Uh, just pushing us every single day to the limit to help us get better. Um, and again, that was, that was another moment that you know that I was proud of as a basketball player. And, you know, to say those names, you know, just gave me goosebumps because those are all guys that kind of either looked up to or or really had high respect for. Right? Well, me and Ron played together in AAU basketball, so I love Ron and other guys that looked up to. So that that that's that's a that's a very humbling moment, you know, to hear that. They got to say Norm Richardson now. They got to say it. They, they, they have to say it now. Like, along with those other names and say it with pride. You got to say it. It's right, just what right, it is, right. man. Oh, man. For sure, for Believe sure. Me. Yep. So, I'm going to take you, you know, off that dinner table when you eat that humble pie, right? Okay. That junior year after coming back from your sophomore year. Yeah. Who ass did you bust that was on everybody's radar and let you know, you know what? I could play in the league. Like, I know, and I know winning those awards is cool, but I know it had to be a measuring stick. Somebody that was out there that you played well against said, you know what? I could go to the league. Um, I, I think, again, it goes back. I, I think the moment that I felt that I could go to the league was, was the ECAC Holiday Fest. We played Georgia Tech. This is my sophomore year, by the way. We played Georgia Tech, and they just came off of beating the number one team in the country, North Carolina. And we played against them in that holiday festival, and I had a really good game. And, again, I, my game wasn't wasn't based on busting nobody behind, right? I, I wasn't really like – I wasn't that type of player, so I'm not going to toot my horn too much on this one. Got you, got you, got you. I, I, play, I played off of Speedy Classic, Jay Hernandez. They helped me. They helped me get these buckets. I was a spot up guy, so I'm not gonna toot my horn too much. But uh, you know, I, I played well in that game. I think I had like 22 points. I hit like four or five three pointers, and and they had they had pros on that team. And again, that made me realize that I can play at this level. Like this is this is a ACC school, a school that just beat North Carolina, who obviously had big time pros um, on their on their roster. And um and we was able to beat them and I was you know I was able to play well, so I think that was a moment that I felt you know I felt uh, I can play at that level. Going into my junior year again, I, I just you know I just had a solid year, just played well all year. I think I was like Batman to speed. I was Robin to Speedy's Batman, right? Speedy was the Batman, and I just I was a really good complimentary player to him. He made me look great. Because he was so dynamic, he was so good. Oh, he was so good, and and I think you know playing alongside him helped me gain you know traction with NBA scouts. They came to watch him, saw me play, and eventually they they saw a role that I, they thought I could fit at that level. And I was very fortunate to to have him as a teammate. Yeah, because you you was dangerous, man. Because you know guys look at you and know like, damn, if I play too tight on him, he might go past me. Oh, fuck if I leave him open, he gonna knock this shit down. Like that's <laughs> when you got you got guys at your will, at your mercy at that moment. You know, yeah. coming from New York, everybody can't shoot. Everybody act like they can shoot, but everybody can't shoot. They just keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and when you find that one that can, it's like, wow, what do, what do we do with them? Right, right, right. Yeah, New York City is not known to produce shooters, so you know, I definitely. Uh, I definitely uh, had a had a skill that wasn't popular with the community. Uh, but again, I give my I give my brother Dirk a lot of credit for that. Man. He he had me shoot so many jump shots. And he was never easy on me. He he probably was my big my biggest critic. Wow. Uh, him 
him and Jay Wright was my two biggest critics coming up. So uh, those two got to get a lot of credit. Derek definitely started and Coach Wright was able to complete it. Wow. That's crazy, yeah. man. Now, yeah, man. I know this from the majority of people I talk to. When you finally yeah. made it to the NBA, I think all of Brooklyn was happy for you. Like, people, like, they was just pulling up like, yo, you see, son? He did. Like, you know, and not say anyone doubted you, but like you said, it was a slow, it was a slow baking of a cake. Yeah, right? Yeah, it wasn't, you yeah. didn't come out, you wasn't like all oh, everything at 11, 12, 13, 14. Right. You hit your, your stride in college. And, yeah. you know, a lot of kids are not realizing like, if you put in the work, it'll come. But if you try absolutely. to get it too fast, it could go away quick as well. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think, uh, and again, I, I mean, I think you know, you know, I, that, that's a, that's another thing that I, you know, that you know makes me feel good is, is because, you know, anyone who knew me from a young kid, you know, if you ask anybody that they think I was going to the NBA at that point in time, you know, everyone would say no. You know what I mean? So. It was a slow grind. It was a, you know, it was a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifice, you know, during those times. Um, and I felt that I, I was able to overachieve because of it. You know what I mean? I was able to do something that many didn't think I could do. Um, uh, but again, it, it, it was a, at, at the same time, it was a support system. You know, you just got to have a good support system around you. Um, and guys who knew me, I had a, I had one best friend growing up named Idris. We, we was together all the time. He played ball. He always supported me. My brother obviously was a big support, um, was a big supporter of mine. And then, you know, Jack Ring was stepping in, you know, at an early age and really promoting me and being in my corner, you know, was a, was another big supporter. And then the community alone, Coney Island, being a basketball community, you know, it kind of, you know, make you want to make them proud, you know, especially coming from the, 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 the street that I came from, 23rd Street, you know, which was like, you know, my boy Darren, always in my corner, right? D-Zone, always, another man. classmate yeah, of mine. Yeah, yeah, Darren was big. Uh, um, Slice was big. Uh, I remember your brother, Six, I remember when I got, when I got, uh, when I first signed with the Pacers, he threw a, a surprise party for me in front of our building that everybody came out and showed love. And it was, it was just a, it was just a, you know, just a good feeling. Uh, and I, I would never forget that. I got pictures. I look at the pictures sometime and and it brings back real good memories uh, during that time. And uh, yeah, man, it was it was it was it was a special moment for me and one that I would never forget. Wow, man. It, it's crazy, man. I want to say rest in peace to Jack Ringle. Uh yeah. Knowing that uh him and my coach started our coaching together, Bobby Hostin, they, they started our coaching together. Right at yeah, Lincoln. I don't, I don't know where the beef went, but they were coaching together early on. <laughs> I, yeah. I I tell you if you text me. <laughs> I got you. I facts, got you. facts. But yeah. you know, my coach, you know, still love him to death, so he always talks yeah. good about Jack. So right. Yeah. So <clears throat> now being in the NBA, I know a lot of guys when I speak to them about their experience <laughs> in the NBA. Uh, about they yeah. they get to enjoy it afterwards, like and they're not really enjoying the moment, right? Was you the same way? You didn't get to enjoy the moment while you were there, or you took time to like soak it all in, and but it moved too, or, or went, it went by too fast. What? Because well, NBA enjoy- three years, ten years, twelve years. Yeah. I speak to yeah. them all, and they all say your yeah. gears are blurred until I look mm-hmm. back and reflect. Well, I tell you, I guess, you know, I guess it was my path because I enjoyed every moment. I had to. <laughs> it was like, I couldn't believe I was there. You know what I mean? Like, That's real. I mean, think about it. My my first my first basketball coach in the NBA was Isaiah Thomas. Like, right? Like, I looked up to Isaiah Thomas. I, I, like, now he's my, he's my basketball coach. Like, how can you not enjoy that moment, right? Reggie Miller was someone that I watched kill my – my childhood team, the New York Knicks, for years. <laughs> I'm playing with him. He's my teammate. Let's congratulate wow. him. Give him five. I'm working out with him. How can I not enjoy that moment? Like I, I have to enjoy that moment. And then my first official NBA game, I play against Michael Jordan. 
like this, this, this is these, these are things I can't make up. So, no, I, I can't relate to not enjoying the moment. Um, I guess, I guess it was the path that I took. Um, I, every moment I was in that, you know, in that seat, I made sure to enjoy it to the fullest. I made sure to appreciate it to the fullest um, because it comes and goes. And um, and yeah, no, so I enjoyed every Yo, moment. Brother, no doubt I, about it. Let me tell you, I'm I'm so happy that you did that. Yeah. With guys, they don't take time to savor the moment, you know? Yeah. And I tell guys, if I would have been in the league 30 days or had a 10-day contract to put the NBA socks on knowing that I'm going to play in a real NBA game, not faking it. Like, you put the NBA socks on and you get the pitch in your mind and you sit in front of the locker room. All of those things, seeing the logo on the floor, you know, yeah. probably had that in college, but it's not the NBA. It's a whole yeah, it's not different. The same. It's yeah, not yeah. the same. And yeah, absolutely. A lot of people don't take the time to savor the moment because it could be over. Yeah, absolutely, you know? absolutely. So I mean, I get it. I get why I get why it happens that way. The NBA can be a blur. You know, you, you know, the season just just goes right. It's like you got eighty-two games. You're, you're constantly traveling. You're constantly on the road. Um, you're from city to city, you know, now I get a lot of sleep. So I can see how it can be a blur to some. Um, but again, some guys get drafted. Some guys kind of expected to get there from a young age. So, you know, I don't think they have the same, you know, sort of feeling that I that I had just because of the path. Some may have the same, uh, just that, you know, but you said you spoke to many that didn't. So, you know, maybe their path was just a little different than mine. And, they kind of had different expectations. Yeah, and again, the, I think what helped you was the slow grind, right? Absolutely. You know, I agree. Terrence Wrencher, and I always use him, salute to my guy, Terrence Wrencher, super awesome yeah. guy. But he says to himself, he said, yo, G, becoming uh, Mr. Basketball in New York and then being the number one scorer in Texas history, getting drafted, and now they want me to start over. You know, and he said I was immature then. They didn't yeah. realize that you could be the man in high school, college, but every you go to the NBA, well, you could be the man in high school, come to college, and got to start all over again. Right. For right. most people, right? right? right. You go to the NBA, 99.9% .9 of everybody starting over fresh. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it's, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, I know it sounds easy. Right? I know T-Rents knows best, right? He was there. He he knows once you, you know, you sometimes you don't understand that. You have to reflect once you, you know, once you're not there anymore. You get older and mature and you get a chance to sit down and reflect. You see that, especially he's a coach now. So I know it's, it, it really hits home with him now. Uh, you know, he's a competitor. We all competitors. At the end of the day, I still thought I should play, right? I'm playing behind Reggie Miller. Jalen Rose was on that team as well. Like, I mean, who am I to, to think I should be on the floor? But the competitive <laughs> juices does, you know, come out, and you do want to play. So I do understand that. But again, like I wasn't Mr. Basketball in New York, and I didn't, you know, I didn't score two thousand plus points in college. So for me, you know, to to get to where I was able to get, you know, it, it just was a blessing that I didn't want to take for granted. But who's in their right mind is going to come out of college? And say, you know what? I deserve to be playing in front of Reggie Miller, and I'm better than Jalen Rose. Knowing the work that these guys put in, and they got the same kind of feeling as you, right? And the Absolutely. same position. It's like uh, my guy from uh, they used to play with John Wall. What was his backcourt partner? Uh, Kentucky. No, when when it was on the Wizards before he got traded. Bra Bradley Bill. Yes. There's a video of Bradley Bill talking to some guy, talking to his AAU team. And he's telling him. I saw it. I saw it, yeah. None of you muckers is taking my job. Yeah. And I they don't that. realize the difference between what a grown man is thinking and feeling than you being a kid saying, I'm nicer than you. Right, 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 yeah. There's a difference. I mean, there's a reason why those guys are the, considered to be the best in the world. I mean, this is it's no coincidence that they're the best. They're the best for a reason. Because they they put you know they put the work in. Um, they obviously got a gift, um, and you know in my opinion, you know that that right there says it all. Says it all, right? They got to put the work in with their with their gift. 
and you got to just respect that. When you get there, hopefully you can learn some points from them and, and get better and better. And then, you know, you get the, your chance, you know, you get the chance to step on the floor and you take full advantage of that. What was your best experience in the NBA? And your best playing, game that you remember? Playing in Madison, playing in Madison Square Garden versus the Knicks. Um, I think I, I was traded to the Bulls at this time. We played, we played at the Garden. I always played well at the Garden for whatever reason. Um, you man, know, you, won, you, won, you won there. You won bigger awards in that, that, yeah. that, that arena, man. Yeah, I think it was just a comfort level there for me. Um, and um, I, we played against the Knicks, and Bill Carrey was our coach and with the Bulls. He knew it was a homecoming for me. He, he gave me more minutes than I was playing with the Bulls that, that game. I was able to score, like, I guess 10 points, 12 points, or whatever it was. And, you know, it was a, it was a good home, coming home party for me. We won the game. And that was probably like my most successful game in the NBA. Wow, yo! And at and the garden, probably, it, w- it was it right. Was my look, most bro. Successful game. Yeah. And and those you people who played at the garden, if you're a shooter, yeah. you will love to play at the garden. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. The space it had like the perfect space compared to other yeah. arenas for yeah. a shooter. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, the lighting is great too. Yes. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah, only a, only a shooter would know. Like each, a lot of just be like, nah, but I have it. Yeah, but right. the different arenas, you know, the spaces are different. Like shooting at the Carrier Dome, it's like absolutely. Yeah, it's different. No it's a whole it. different. No it's a whole it. different. No, no, right, no doubt about it. So, so now you start to take this trip overseas. Yeah, and you, how many passports, fam? Like. <laughs> Like you was traveling man. like a rapper, and I'm not talking about just going to different places. Because I know if you're in one place, you're traveling to different places as well. Do you move to another country, oh, yeah. and then you traveling to more different countries? Yeah, overseas was just a total different experience for me. Uh, you know, it was again another culture shock. My first chance or my first opportunity overseas was with was in Italy with a phenomenal organization, um, Scavolini Pesaro. Um, that's one. That's uh, I would say that's one thing I kind of like look back and didn't take full advantage of was my time overseas. I think, you know, going there, you know, I, just to be honest, I didn't want to be there initially. I just didn't want to be out the country. I missed my family. I missed the American culture. And, um, you know, so I, in my first few years, I struggled there. You know, I struggled in Italy. I struggled in Serbia. I had to really like mature get a different mindset um, in order for me to start having success over there. And um, I think uh, once I, you know, was able to come to terms that that's where I was going to be playing for, you know, for the rest of my career, I was able to uh, start to embrace their culture, um, started to uh, meet new friends and enjoy myself there and travel around, you know, throughout Europe and other parts of the, you know, of the, of the, of the world. And, um, it was a, ge- a great experience. You know, I got a chance to play in, um, I played in Italy, Serbia, um, France, Germany, and Poland. So I got a chance to play in five different countries on, on the European continent. And, um, and each one was a, was a unique experience. And I'm um, very blessed to have had that opportunity. And, um, you know, another, another experience that I won't take back for the world. Do you speak any different languages? You know, at the time, I, I was, I was, you know, learning German. I was getting real fluent in Germany. In German, I, I was, uh, <laughs> I was coaching in German for a time. So, but now I'm so rusty. I don't, I don't know anything. I, I, I can't tell you three words in Germany, right? Right, German, right, right, now, right. You know, that's dope. That's yeah. dope. Well, yeah. I, I, I was telling Gary uh, last night that uh, I had Kim Hampton on here, and she played yeah. like 30 years overseas. And yeah. she speak about five or six different languages. She blew my mind. I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, yeah. You get you get a chance to learn language. Like I, I, I mean, I'm exaggerating. I can still, you know, I can still have a small conversation with someone in 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 German, but but uh, I'm I'm not I'm not four or five languages in. No, no, no. That's 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 honest, man. That's, that's honest. big time. Tell 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 her tell her that uh, I'm very impressed with that. Yes, definitely, that. definitely. Yeah. If you want to go watch it, it's on YouTube, man. She 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 goes okay, in. I, I had her and her sure. daughter on. Yeah. yeah, her daughter's a good player. My wife is friends with her and her daughter, so uh, her daughter's I got the a truth, yo. Her. She's really good. Yeah, really good player. She's gonna be really good. Let me tell you, 
it's two girls. It's the it's, it's a few of them, but you know, Han Paris Clark, right? Ariel Jackson and Paris Clark. Yeah. When you see them walk, they got the yeah. ball player walk. Yeah. Still yeah, being a female it. though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's that absolutely, walk absolutely. that you have that separates you from everybody else. And you can see it. We seen star players, right? Yeah. At the time when Speedy was the man on the team, he had that walk. Yeah. Right? No doubt. Desi Wilson, when I played that Fairleigh Dickinson, he had that walk. It was it's just different. So when you no see these girls it. walk in the gym, I was at the Queen, the Queen Me tournament. They had a one-on-one -on -one tournament between the top girls in New York City, and they were playing one-on-one -on -one against each other. Okay. And when she walked in the gym, first of all, she was like standing right behind me. I just see all the girls uh, come my way. Okay. I thought LeBron came in. I thought. Hey, what's up, Paris? Right, right. All the right. girls, it's like, and you just knew yeah. it was something different. She's going to UCLA. Yeah. yeah, big time. That's big time. Congrats to her, too. Yes, definitely. So now, you transitioned to coaching. You said Tiny was your first inspiration as far as being a coach. And then it, your college coach as well. Yeah, well, I I I would say I, I mean I I'm not I'm I'm not uh I didn't I don't I didn't say he was my first inspiration of coaching. He just he he inspired me, you know to to get he helped inspire me to get into coaching. He wasn't Got the you. first okay. guy. Okay. You know, okay. First, okay. You know my, my first you know I I you know I didn't think about coaching until my until my last year. We had a coach that I was playing with overseas that uh you know I was injured at the time and he was he used to you know ask for my advice players certain things that we were doing on the floor. So I was able to like watch the game from, you know, from a different lens, from different lenses. Right. I was on the sideline watching I was, my first time, you know, having significant time off from playing basketball, right. In my career. So I was, I would sit down and talk to him a little bit and you know, he would bounce ideas off me. And you know, I would ask him questions and he was kind of like, you know, he was kind of like the first guy that I watched and, you know, and, you know, got some inspiration from, um, and then when I, you know, when I stopped playing, I came home, you know, and tiny, you know, I got a chance to, you know, go around Lincoln, watch Lincoln a little bit. And I, he was the next guy that I started to see and, you know, his success, and how he handled it was, you know, was something that I was, you know, that was, you know, watched closely and, and, and he also started to inspire me, you know, to move in, in that direction. But, you know, when I first stopped playing, I didn't get right into coaching right away I was you know I, I got into another sector and worked like in the non-for-profit sector before I you know moved on to coaching what, what brought you back so I mean I, I always had an interest you know I you know I, when I got home and I started working you know a regular nine to five job you know you know I just found myself in the gym somehow some way you know helping someone um working someone out watching basketball constantly and I and I missed it. And I'm like, I, I, I want to be involved in basketball. You know, and coaching it was something I, you know, I, even though I didn't do it during that time overseas at that time, right? I was playing it at the time, I was able to sit down and enjoy watching the game from a different scope. Um I, I it brought me back to that time, you know, during that during my two years away from coaching. And when I was, you know, working, I, you know, I started going around in high school, watching high school practice, watching Hofstra practice. And, you know, then I started getting itched to, you know, want to coach. And, you know, I got a call from, you know, somebody over in Germany. And they gave me an opportunity to interview for a job. And I went over there and interviewed, and they offered me the job to start coaching there. And that was my first coaching opportunity. As a head coach, not as an assistant yeah. coach, as a yeah. head coach. Yeah. How was that experience, yes. man? First time coaching was, head coach? You're running a professional. You're coaching a professional club. It was. It was good. So it was. It was. It was a. Uh, it was definitely a unique experience for me, right? I had to, you know, try again to engulf myself in a different culture. The locker room is obviously a bit different than it would be in the states. Um, and again, it was. It was. Uh, you know, it was a lower level basketball team. It wasn't a higher level. Um, team over in Germany, but it, nonetheless, it gave me a chance to have experience, and um, you know, so I, 
I went there and you know, and I embraced it right away. You know, the, the the guys that we had on that team was was phenomenal. They accepted me right away. Um, they bought into the program that I was creating there. Um, I actually still have some you know guys that I consider friends of mine. You know, wow. uh, you know that I coached there, and um, it was a very good experience. A very good you know uh, uh, opportunity for me to get my feet wet and realize that I really wanted to do this thing full time. And um, so I got a chance to do it over there. And then, you know, obviously I want to get back to the States. And that's when I came back to the States looking for opportunities here. Yeah. Trev said you were going to be coaching with him until you got the call from Charlotte. That's absolutely. So it wasn't for Charlotte at the time. It was uh, I, I, I moved to Vegas. Um, I just had my first son and contacted Trevor Diggs, man, who was so helpful you know, on my move to Vegas. Uh, I got there. He was coaching a high school team. I just, you know, I just was, you know, again, getting back from overseas and getting back into the States and getting back into the winter things. And he, he was coaching a prep school in, in Vegas and he offered me an opportunity to come coach with him at that prep school. And I was excited to do it. I couldn't wait to be coaching with somebody I knew. Wow. That would have been awesome. I could learn. Yep. So, uh, he just won. He was, he was winning. He had a great record out there. He was winning big, big time over there. And, uh, and then, um, Jay Hernandez, who I played with at Hofstra was coaching with the Orlando magic. Um, he was an assistant there, and he 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 contacted me and said that they had a an opportunity with the Orlando Magic G League team, and would I be interested? And I'm like, absolutely, no doubt about it. I'm interested. I want to I want to interview for the spot. They they wound up interviewing me, and and, and uh, offered me the job. So I didn't get a chance to coach with Trev. I got my first chance in the G League, and um and I've been you know I, I was a part of the G League for the you know for five years after that. Wow. This is awesome, man. You yeah. see, yeah. being the good person that you are, the responsible person, disciplined, dedicated, people are never going to forget that. So when those Appreciate opportunities, it. you know, come along and hopefully, you know, we can spread this to the younger guys, you always want to be a good person because somebody going to look back and open up that door for you when you need it. Yeah, I, I mean, I totally agree with you. It's, it's something I, I took away from, from Jay Wright at Hofstra, and I think he still he uses this to this day. He actually wrote a book about it. It's called Attitude. Um, and again, like he, he always says, the one most important characteristic you can, you, you can have is, is, your, is the most important, important characteristic is your attitude, right? That's the one thing you can't control, you know, whether it's you know in basketball and, and life in general. So I try to take that approach every single day to work, with my family, um, you know, when I'm conversing with people in, you know, in my neighborhood or, you know, at the grocery store, wherever I am, I just try to just keep a positive attitude with everything that I do. Um, and again, I, I give credit to, to Jay Wright because, you know, he kind of instilled that into us. Wow. Somebody just said something. This new phone here is driving me crazy. I got a new phone and okay. it's okay. It's not let me pin. Somebody just said, "Oh, there yeah. you go." Um, says Ty Ty Crane always be a great human being, connected and networking. Facts, facts. Always tell kids yeah. that, man. So yeah, Ty, that ties my ties my guy too. He's going one one of our guys from Coney Island who uh, was doing a phenomenal job. He was playing in China for a while, and me and him got a chance to get in the gym a little bit and work out. That's my guy. I love that kid. Where, where's love he from? What high school he went to? Ty, I'm not sure what high school he went to. I know he went. I don't know he went to um, Florida International University out uh, out in my and I guess it's in Coral Gables, Florida. <laughs> I wonder if he played. You played with Marvin Roberts, my guy Marvin Roberts. He won the Fight Club. I mean the uh, Fight Ball. He also played at Florida International as well. Okay. Yo, Ty, hit me in the DM. We can talk. Yeah. Fact. And, and you coming on here? I always tell my guests. You guys are the guys that's going to nominate people to come on the show, right? There's a few people that I I reach out to, but I I yeah. want the, the our basketball community to reach out to each other and say, listen, man, come on the show, tell your story. You know, started this uh thing last year about a year and a half ago when the pandemic started, but right, it's always right. been in the works because I wanted to kind of model it after drink champs without the drinks, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, saw Lamar Odom on Dream Champs, and I and it 
and it came to me. It was like, yo, G, this is it. Yeah. Everybody always been telling me, you need to do a podcast and do hip hop, do all this other stuff. And I need to go back to the essence. After seeing yeah. Lamar Audemars Drink Champs, who I'm a big fan of. Love Nori's yeah. show. Me too. Been supported yeah. from the beginning. But I knew at that point, our basketball brotherhood needed a place where they could come and feel safe to tell their story. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. I appreciate it. Because I, I, stopped, uh, I showed Gary Irv an article. I put up an article, and the numbers is off, way off. So when he averaged 27, they say he averaged seven. And I always tell people, I used to teach history. They're going to, somebody's going to tell your story a little bit different than how you would tell it. Yep, yep. We may not be around. Right. Somebody may right. gather all this information. Next thing you know, the kids and the future is looking back at the past as some nonsense that wasn't even true. Yep, yep, yep. So we have basketball heads. What we want to do, we want to document this uh, history. And I'm going to call my man real quick because I know we got a picture for you. Come on. Oh, Lord. Wow. You're supposed to call me back. You know, what we do on the show, I have uh, an artist named Jamel Powell. Okay. He's a He's a ball player as well. Played at Jackson. Okay, cool. And <clears throat> yo, you ready? Yo. You ready? Yeah, I'm on. Okay, all right. I'm gonna bring you on. All right. So cool. We're gonna bring him on right now, so you can right. check out, see what he has for you. Okay. Uh, where are you, Mel? Go. Wow, this is crazy. Okay, here we go. He's going to come on right now. Okay. There you go. He's up. He's about to come on now. You got to turn your picture. You got to turn the screen around, Mel. You got to turn the camera around. Yeah. It's turned around. All we see is the black screen. Can you see anything? I can't see it yet. I think it's uh, I I think think it's, it's an internet service. There you go. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the, the camera turned around. Oh man, I can I can see this picture. It looks like oh man, dope man. So I know there's a picture of you in your coaching yeah. uniform, and there's a picture of you playing. That's dope right there. That's really dope right there, man. Goodness, wow. I appreciate that, brother. Goodness, that's amazing, man. That's amazing right there. Yo, that's hot, Mel. Man. That's really hot. Yeah, I'm getting this. Okay. Wow. And we had Norm That's Roberts impressive. on as well. So it's crazy okay. how he freaked right. the, two, the two different pitches. Yeah. Right. yeah wow. That's amazing right there, man. Good job, Mel, man. Goodness, I appreciate no it. Doubt. Thank you, man. No doubt, man. We're going to be getting these pitches out soon, man. Uh, shit, load of pitches to get out. Thank you, man. I appreciate I know, you, my man. brother. Goodness. That's um, nice. Yeah, man. So, you know, I want to just say, man, I appreciate you. And yes, tonight we wanted to give you your flowers, man. Let you know how proud of you we are of the thing Thank that you. you have accomplished, the man that you grew up to be and continue to be, right? Keep making the change. Keep changing lives. And, brother, just stay 10 toes down, man. You're going to keep making us proud, man. For sure. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. You know, I haven't seen you in years, man, but like nothing changed, man. You know, absolutely, man. It's, it's always the oh, same. No doubt. Absolutely. Yo, yo, absolutely. Isaiah, you got to show your brother some love, fam. It's a Lincoln brother. We got to keep it tight. 
telling you. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. I tell people, once they they find out, like, who my family is and, you know, Six, Cheryl, Monique, Mr. C, yeah. like, that's your father? Like, yes, yeah. that's my dad. It's my brothers yeah, yeah. and sisters. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. You know, it, and we all family, right? Absolutely. I, I spent Absolutely. a lot of time in building, too. Trust me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know all through Coney Island, man. For sure. Absolutely, man. So, Thank brother, you. again, man, I want to say I love you, man. I'm so proud you, of brother. you, fam. I'm so proud of you. And thank you, man, thank you. for being the person that you are and making the, all of us proud of you, man. Man, thanks. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks a lot, man. Let's stay in touch, all right? Will do, man. And I, I'll definitely no. uh, see you that. Just send me your information so I have, you know, your uh, yeah, some place I'll to mail everything. it to. Okay? Okay, I'll send everything. No doubt, fool. All thanks, right. Brother. Peace. All right, man. Have a good all one. Right. Good night, man. No doubt. Oh, I always save them. Uh, listen, these, these are the shows. This is the show, baby. Appreciate you, Ty. Please, DM me, right? And we going to hook up. Yo, Isaiah, appreciate you for coming on. Bet, we going to do it. All right. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding, and you've been watching Basketball Heads. Listen, man. I know you guys hear me say this, but when you watch these kings, grow up from being young and a lot of times they're not noting, noticing that you're watching them and you see their growth and their development. I remember Isaiah being a sophomore and I brought some kids down for my mentor program. Lance came in the building and I asked him to take pictures with these young men. These young men are grown men right now and they still have those pictures and cherish that moment. So thank you, Isaiah. You were doing that when you were in the 10th grade, giving back. And you still give it back because you're doing it in your community. Salute to you, my brother. And for my guest tonight, I really mean this, fam. Your brothers, stand-up dudes. Salute to Puma. Salute to D-Flight. Yo, D-Flight, we love you, man. The basketball community, we love you. We are proud of the things you did. And then you made sure that your brother followed suit. Salute to the whole family. My God, Norm Richardson, we out of here. Glenn Poole Harding, you've been watching Basketball Heads, the official home for New York City basketball. Peace.